Hi, my name is Pam Denny. I'm the designer and architect of the Maximo BI or Business Intelligence Tools. Today's demo is part four in a series where we're looking at the Maximo 7.6 ad hoc or QBR functionality in depth. In part one of the series, we looked at the style tab, part two was content, part three was calculate, and today is part four where we're going to look at and explore the summarize tab in more detail. The goal of this series is to make you more familiar with the functionality in 7.6 so you can maximize this use and create really powerful ad hoc reports. A few things I just want to highlight is our wiki page. There are a number of recorded demos available on other features of ad hoc reporting. For example, our new expression library, preview limits, and also talking about the summarize and calculate tabs in more detail. But our goal with this series is to bring everything together as you move through it throughout the ad hoc reporting dialogue. I also want to reference a worksheet that's available to you. The worksheet is set up to correspond to the various tabs available in the ad hoc reporting dialogue. Today we're going to look at the summarize tab and there's a few key points that I want to highlight. First are our data types. Following on with our calculate tab, data types are very important in the summarize tab. We filter so that only numeric data types are displayed and that you can interact for them. <clears throat> the reason this occurs is it doesn't really make sense to add an average of a description text field, for example. We can't work with those values. So we filter them out to only show the numeric fields that you can add as summary values. A couple other important points that I want to raise is that freeform entry is not an available in this field. Like the format tab, it's pretty guided experience. You select an attribute and then you select the summary value. And we'll show you that as we move through that. So let's go over here to work order tracking. I have my work order backlog report that I've been building and I have filtered on my status. I haven't added any additional content or fields, but on my Calculate tab, I'm bringing forward that calculation that I created in the earlier, um, excuse me, series where I'm looking at my number of weeks overdue. So let's go over here to Summarize. And in the Summarize tab, you're going to see it's made up in the very top section, just like our Calculate tab. Here's my objects in the hierarchy that I have or my report object structures and then over here on the available fields as I mentioned we have the filter applied. You can only see those numeric data fields that you can apply a summary to. So what are our summary values? What you have available to you are seven features, a total, a count, an average, a minimum, maximum, medium, and mode. So let's see how this works. Let's take an actual ma material cost. I click on the value, click on that hyperlink, and it brings it right down here in the field. And then I can say, hmm, let's do a total. Click on the total that populates the function, and then I simply add the value. A couple of key points is, again, I can't um, type in at either one of these fields. It's all a read only. I must directly um, select the value couple other things I wanted to mention, excuse me, was I can add the same value as many times as I want. However, I can't add the same function again. So if I, you know, lost track of what I was doing and I tried to add a total actual material cost and click add, it's not going to let me. It's telling you you've already used it. Do something to make that summary unique. So the way I'm going to make it unique is I'll instead take an average. I'm not going to change my attribute value, leave that the same, and now I have a unique summary and uniqueness again is defined by the attribute value along with the summary function. Let's see what our report is looking like as we build this content. And so I'm going to preview my report and that's going to bring it over here into the BERT viewer. And as I come over here, Here's my summaries that I've added, my actual material cost. I have a total and an average. We show it at the very top of the page because sometimes that might be all the information you need. And here is the calculation that I have at the, um, that I've added over here on the far right. Well, let me come back a minute and now let's start to experiment this in more detail. Well, can I 
add, for example, a summary to a calculation that I've added. So if you remember, that was the number of weeks, so I'm just going to put in number and see if it displays. And, oh, that's the job plan number, which is a nice attribute, but not what I was looking for. So again, my was the number of weeks, it's overdue, it doesn't display. So the answer is no, you can only have a summary on an attribute. You cannot have summaries based on calculations. A calculation isn't a persistent field in the database, and when we work with reports, we need to work from persistent fields. Calculation is a actual column that you've created within the report content. Well, I've got a couple of fields over here from work order, and I know that because I'm highlighting my category value, and that's populated. And I can come in and I could change the value or I could change the order. But let's go and let's start to look at the hierarchy because this is so important when we come to summarize. Let me come over here to asset. And now when I come to asset, let's imagine that, oh, let's grab the budgeted cost. I click on it. And as soon as I do that, it tells me that I either have to have an expression from the asset category or a calculation. Okay, so again, I either have to have a calculation, which is an expression, or an attribute added from the asset category. And I'm not sure I said that right the, the first time, so I'll repeat myself. You've got to do something with asset before you add a summary. Either select an, as an attribute or create a calculation. Well, I'm just going to go over here to content and let me quickly go down to the asset field, um, highlight it over here. It doesn't have to be that asset, or excuse me, that attribute that I may want to form my summary on. It can be any attribute within the asset object. Um, let's come down here to specifications and let's grab a value there. I don't know if I'm going to use it or not, but I'll add that. So now I'm going to come back over here to summary. And so since I have added an attribute from the asset location, now when I go to budgeted cost, <coughs> excuse me, it's going to add that value. Oh, let's grab a minimum and go ahead and, <coughs> excuse me, add the value. And you know, when you're adding these values, it might be helpful. Again, it's totally what you want to do. You know, maybe I need to tell myself that um, this is my minimum budgeted cost. I'm just going to say from the asset object. Now let's preview that so I can start to understand again where all my different attributes and where all my different values are coming into play. My report refreshes the preview stage. And what we now expect to see is some additional values up here. Here's my minimum budgeted asset object over here. And then here's my calculation, which I continued. Here's a couple of those other um, individual attributes that I've added. And you can see that as you build up your report content, those attributes continue to be added over here on the right-hand side. And my calculations always display after all my persistent attributes. A couple of the other things that you'll see as I come over here, I'm going to go back. Um, oh, I, I'm trying to remember if I did add something from my uh, specifications table, and I think I did. Uh, where else do we want to grab something from? Oh, let's just go to job plan. Nice little object there, uh, heavily accessed. Let's grab our crew. So now if I navigate through my content tab, watch our category. Again, as we go throughout the hierarchy, it's going to show here's my asset specifications and job plans. And now again, when I come to the summarize tab, I can add any summary from work order, asset specifications, and job plans. Let's go over here to job plans. Let's go ahead, add something else. Um, I don't know what all these fields are, but I'm just going to grab my downtime. Let's grab a mode and go ahead and add that. So again, you can see how we're building the content. Oh, this is so good that this showed um, this value because I wanted to mention this. So what I've done is I've selected downtime, which is a yarn field, and it's giving me a message. The data type for the selected field is not compatible with the selected function. 
select another data type or function. Well, what does that mean? Well, this means that I can't do a mode on a downtime. Hmm. Well, downtime is urine field. Can I do a minimum? Let me try that. I select the value, try to add it, and I'm getting the same message. Why am I getting these messages? Because I've filtered out my data and these are the available functions. Well, the reason you're getting the message is there's sometimes that it doesn't actually make a lot of sense with specific database types to add a function. So, for example, a yarn field is either a 1 or a 0. So, it's very um, difficult to create a minimum, maximum, mode, or median. So, how do you know that? Well, let's go back to this worksheet. And at the very bottom, there's this really nice kind of like picture that shows you all the different database, database types we support. Here's all the different functions. And notice that for some of them, in this case yarn, they're yellowed out. That means they're not available. So what does this mean? Yes, for a yarn field, I can do a total of it. I could do a count. I can do an average, but I can't do any of these other fields. And the same holds true with date, date, time and time fields. For example, I can't do a total of a date field because how do I add a number of date fields together? But I can do a count, I could do a min, max, etc. So again, referring back to this worksheet, this is such an important chart to make sure that you have an understanding of why you might be getting those messages and for your users. Other thing that I want to highlight while we're here in this spreadsheet is what the display is. This is the fixed format. So for example, if you have a decimal field, you'll always get two decimal places and an integer will show a zero. And the results of what you're going to see are also in this chart. So let's look at, for example, an amount. If I do a count of it, I'm going to get an integer and my integers always display a zero decimal places. So again, it's really important and critical information to understand this chart and how it goes together with the different database types. So let me come, instead of doing a downtime, I'll do a count on downtime, which is a yarn field. So I'll change that over to a count and now let me add the value. So that's going to build upon the content and now let me go ahead and preview that report and show again what we've done with our summarize functionality and the key points. Here's my values on the top of the report. I've done summarize from the parent work order object and also my asset and job plan. They're showing over here and going back to our summarize tab, the key points. We filter out the available fields for numeric data types. There's no free form entry. You must use a function in the fields. You can use a field more than once in a summary, but it has to be unique, the combination of the field and the function. And as I referenced in the spreadsheet, it's important to note that not every data type is supported for every function. And the example that we used was the yarn and the minimum, maximum, etc. functions are not available. So with that, I'd like to thank you very much for your time. And then in our last series, we'll explore the format and edit capability. Thank you.